Just over 80 kilometres from Adelaide, in the hills above Victor Harbour, retired farmers Pat and Gerald Uphill have turned what was a cow paddock into a beautiful native garden and bird habitat. Now this is just beautiful. How did it come about? Well, it was a cow paddock that we managed to get in 2003 and we've gone from there. So when we got here, it was you know, garden. The minute we walked in, we started gardening. And a lot of decisions I made then were probably not the best decisions because <laughs> I just simply had to grow everything. <laughs> in the end, I decided mainly to go native because it fitted in with the environment that we had here already with all these um, mature gums and native really had to be the way to go. And that suited me fine, so. So how big is the property? It's just on two hectares. Now you've got these magnificent trees. Did you have to lose any to build your house or the shed? No, no, we're so very proud of that. Not a single sapling. Now being farmers, you know how important good soil is. Tell us about the soil here. I don't actually know. I've never tested it because I can see what it's like. I can see that that corner's sandy. I know it's a little bit clay up there because I dig there. I know that the bottom is beautiful soil because of its colour and because of the quality of the vegetables it grows. So no, I've taken the soil much for granted, I'm afraid, and never tested, just done it by instinct and you know, looking at it and digging in it. Do you use fertilisers in the garden? We do constantly renew surfaces um, with mulch. Mm -hmm. um, some of it, you know, all our bits and pieces go into uh, making up compost. You've got a collection of banksias in this area. Was that deliberately chosen? Yes, I learnt over a few years that this is really sandy and that's mm -hmm. what banksias love. And so that's why I've gone for the banksias in this corner. Now, that's a beautiful specimen there. Yes, that one's in Tegrafolia, the prostrate form from the eastern coast of Australia. And looks gorgeous. Yes, yes. And you've got the tall one over there? The coccinia, yes. That, mm -hmm. I'm really proud of that one because um, apparently it's quite difficult to grow and people are most envious of it. So I'm very proud of that one. So I love the bird noise yes. here. How many birds do you get to visit your garden? Well, I've counted over 80 different species. Wow. They range from water birds because of the creek, lots of honey eaters, lots of rosellas and lorikeets, finches, shrike tits, um, one of my favourites, wow. and everyone loves the blue wrens. Certain species, in particular the wrens, they come out to feed, they follow you around as you're working. In all the time we've been here, I've never seen a blue wren nest, and yet we have dozens and dozens, so they're obviously breeding. Mm. And they're breeding in the swamps because it's safe for them, harder for the foxes to get them. Um, so swamp is a really important breeding area. Now, I haven't heard about a perch swamp before. What is it? Well, it's just as the name says, it's perched right on the side of a hill as opposed to something, you know, down in a gully. Okay, is that mm. because there's a spring there? Yes, yes. And it's moist all year round? Yes, all right through summer. So, oh, mm, so you can depend on these surviving because they are swamp plants and they've got water all year round. And so is the tea tree a, an indicator of where a perch swamp is? Yes, that lovely grey, um, mm. that dispernum, is a, a preferred swamps, yes, so. So this is your productive patch, you know, yes. you've got your berries and strawberries and the yeah. veggies, but this orchard looks amazing. Yes, it is, isn't it? So I think we've got around about 22 trees in there, doubled up on most things, but yeah, yeah all, everyone is quite productive. And a great setup with this cage to keep yes. everything out. Yes, yes. Um, well, it keeps nearly everything out. The, the uh, little silver eyes actually have the capacity to eat through there and pop through the hole, and particularly like the cherries, of course. How important do you think it is to be able to grow your own fresh fruits and veggies, or how important to you is it? 
Well, to me, it is freshness, you mm. know, being able to pop down, oops, I've forgotten to go to the shop, pop down, oh, I've got plenty of vegetables, mm. and you're eating them within an hour. There's nearly 20 years of love and labour in Pat and Gerald's garden. They've been committed to regeneration and rejoicing in the diversity of Australian natives that they've planted. And the result is gorgeous. <laughs> 